most of us, when we think of movies and TV shows that were turned into video games, we automatically cringe at that thought because of the fact that we've seen so many video games that were based off of TV shows or movies be very, very bad. And we wasted a lot of money on that. So we kind of get turned off of that. So here are five diamonds in the rough that did the opposite of that, gave you a great game. And if you didn't watch the TV show, you understood exactly where you were. So we're going to start off at number one. Number one is Ed, Ed and Eddie. This is a TV show that was a big classic hit in the late 90s, early 2000s, and many people didn't watch it. So when the TV show got turned into a video game, many people were like, huh? But this is actually a good show and a good video game because of the fact that even though it's got weird wonky graphics and you watch cutscenes that don't match the graphics, you still get a funny TV show in between the gameplay. So you have to do the puzzles. It's a basic puzzle platformer where you get a lot of puzzles throughout the area. You have to walk around. It's a free roaming kind of style and you get through and figure out all the levels and get a cute cutscene in between. And for those who didn't watch the TV show, you're basically watching the TV show for the first time. So you were caught up to speed and didn't have to worry about, well, I don't understand any of these creatures slash, you know, characters. Because there is a dude who was walking around with a piece of wood and calling it Plank. So <laughs> it was one of those things where you just had to understand it. And if you didn't, oh, well, say la vie. So this is a great example of a diamond in the rough amongst all the grinds and the garbage. Number two is Edgy Tales, Larry Boy and the Bad Apple. This one was a shocker to me. For those who don't know, Veggie Tales is a TV show about animated fruit and veggies. And there was a lot of cute, catchy little songs. And I thought that was not going to translate very well into a video game. But I was shockingly surprised. This is a great TV show that turned into a good game. For those who don't know, this is basically an open world platformer. Again, you basically just figure out the puzzles, you battle some bosses here and there, and you have to eventually, the end boss, defeat that person, which is an apple, and she is extremely unhappy that nobody is doing what she wants so you pretty much have to learn life lessons while you're going through everything <laughs> and it's funny to watch so if you didn't understand or watch the tv show you're not gonna have to worry about that because you're literally just a superhero and it's always the same thing superhero bad evil villain you have to stop the bad evil villain whatever it is whoever it is and that's one good concept about this is you don't have to watch the TV show to be a superhero. Third on the list is Pirates of Dark Waters. This one actually had two different versions. One was on the Sega Genesis, which I have, and that was a platformer. And then you had the Super Nintendo version, which is a beat-em-up. So again, you don't have to watch the TV show to understand the gameplay. You literally have to collect whatever object for the platformer, which is rubies slash gems, and figure out how to get through a maneuver and jump from place to place, and the enemies are basic stock, you know, pirates, so if you've never seen the show, you just understand that there's a bunch of bad pirates and you're a good pirate, so you're trying to break the mold and get through and defeat and get rid of the dark water that is engulfing all of the land. And for the beat-em-up, same thing. You don't have to watch the TV show to understand it. You literally just have to learn the patterns for the enemies, defeat the enemies, get to the final boss, beat him, and you save the land. So that's one good thing about this one is, again, you didn't have to understand anything. You just either kick and punch for both of them, and you keep walking through, or you jump from platform to platform. So that's why I was so happy when a great TV show got turned into a good game. Fourth game on the list is The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. Now this one is another example of a movie, but it was a book before it was a movie. So this one translated pretty good into a good game, which is pretty much, for those who don't know the story, 
again, you literally just fight your way through enemies, figure out puzzles. It's another slash open world where it's kind of like if you were to play Fire Emblem a little bit where you move your guys around and you have to battle through and you can switch from character to character. So another like Hyrule Warriors where you have to defeat all the enemies in the level and then once you defeat all the enemies in the level, solve all the puzzles, you move on to the next area and you're pretty much just trying to get the four main characters to find Prince Caspian, save the land, and get everything going. And the one good thing is, is it explains the story as you're going along. So you can catch up to speed on what happened in the movie if you didn't even see the movie. So another good one to definitely check out and make sure you have this on your list. And now the next game on the list is Harry Potter. And this one is a franchise. So there's a plethora of games to choose from. I could have picked Prisoner of Azkaban, but I went with the final game because this translated into an epic game. And the reason why is it was the closest to the feeling of the movie and the book. Now, the other ones, the younger ones, those were just teaching you how to be a wizard and what it was like going through the school. And they were actually more closely to the books because the movies were not being finished and completed and the games were actually going through and just reading the books and you were more inclined to understand it if you read the books. But the final ones, all the way up to the very end, the books were already out, the movies were being made and were finished. So by the time these were out, they already knew what was happening. So this one was the closest because you felt the atmosphere, you felt like there was going to be a finish to the ending of the whole franchise and it was going to be an epic battle. And this was actually one of the closest to the end battle and you saw everything build and then finally you were like, well, I got to destroy everything, I got to get through. And it wasn't so obnoxious with the collectibles as the other ones. <laughs> and also, you didn't have to worry about... If you didn't understand the movie, you were getting told the movie the whole way through. So you were understanding and basically watching a movie as you play the game. So this was one of the ones that I recommend if you have not played Harry Potter at all. Because you don't have to go through seven years. You literally just, you saw him grow up, you watched the ending, and you're good to go. <laughs> Bing, bang, boom, done. And... A lot of people don't like to commit to one game and then have to play seven or eight games. So you can just literally get caught up to speed by what was going on in this game and figure out. And if you really, really want to start from the big climax of the when the sh has hit the fan, you would definitely need to play part one and then play part two. But for sure and a good example of a movie franchise turned into a game. And there you have it! Five hidden beautiful diamonds in the rough amongst all the crap. So what have I missed? Is there any other video games that were from TV shows or movies that you say, I think you should have added it to the list? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're new, please subscribe. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep on gaming. Stay safe. And I'll catch you next video. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games too.